Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro. Welcome to Motion Monday, the series where every Monday I show you how to do something in motion. Today we're going to be creating this really nice looking audio visualizer using the particle emitter settings in motion. So let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do obviously is open up motion. If you don't have this screen, go up to file new from project browser. After that, you're just going to want to select the motion project and then we will hop into our frame rate and change that to 2997 or you can do 24 if you want, but um, 2997 typically looks better for animation. And then you're going to want to set the duration to whatever the duration of your song is. So I know that the song I want to use is 173 seconds. So we're just going to set it to that and push open. Once we're here, we can push command. And I and bring in our song. We'll push import and you can see the song is now here on the timeline and if I play it you can hear it and we can actually turn down the volume if we want or turn it up here in the audio tab. Okay so from there we are going to go ahead and add in a particle emitter. So the first thing I want to do is actually make this a circle dot emitter. So we'll just push this down arrow. We'll select the circle and we'll drag it out and push shift. So it's a perfect circle. After that, we can just go ahead into our layers, select our circle and come up to make particles. Or you can also push E and that will do the same thing. Thing. Once we have done that, we can jump into the inspector and if we press play, we can see that it's already emitting particles, although it's not to anything in particular. What I first want to do is have it emitting from a different shape. So we're going to select this point and go down to circle and then we're going to set it to outline. So now it will be emitting from essentially a little circle that's invisible here. You can drag up the radius of that if you want. I'm just going to leave it at 200. Next is the fun part. We are going to animate the rate of these particles coming on using the birth rate. So if we come to the birth rate and push this down arrow, we can go to add parameter behavior and push audio. Now this will enable us to animate the birth rate of the particles to the audio of the music. So once we're there, we can go to this wheel well, select the two and select the audio. Now it's really important that you let this analyze all the way through, otherwise it can cause syncing issues. It is going to take quite a while for the audio to analyze, especially for an entire song or a podcast or something. That's just an unfortunate downside. Okay, so that is completely analyzed. Go ahead, go to our emitter, and let's drag the scale way down. And let's go ahead and set our birth rate to something like 10. And hopefully we can see this a little better. And then hop into our audio again and let's set our scale to five. So you can start to see it happening in here. So the next thing we're going to want to animate is the actual scale of each of these objects. So to do that, we will go ahead and come to our original audio. Let's go ahead and rename this actually to the birth rate. And then we'll push command D to duplicate it and that will create another copy and we can set this to the scale. It's important that you actually duplicate this otherwise you're going to have to reanalyze the entire audio clip. So that's just a time saver to go ahead and leave it how it was. And then we will come down here to the apply to and go to object find your scale and we will do all. So now that it has done that, we can see that there are some larger particles in here, but they're a little bit too large. So let's go ahead and just set that to one. And if we play through, you can see on the louder moments, there's those bigger particles. Perfect. And let's go back to the emitter and maybe we can even set the scale down to Let's go find us a, a smaller moment in the song. We'll set the scale down even a little further and you could turn up the scale ran randomness just a little bit. There we go. We're getting a lot of those small particles and then the big moment there. Perfect. So now we want to add in some color to these particles so they really pop. So to do that, we're just going to come down to this line where it says color mode and we're going to set that to pick from color range. Now, if we drop this down, so I'm going to right click in this empty space here and set this to constant. And so now it's going to either be this color or this color. It's a hard cutoff. There's no gradient in between. So let's go ahead and add in some nice complementary colors to make this audio visualizer. So if we just click anywhere on here, that'll create another dot and we can set this to something like orange. We could add another dot and do a little bit more of a turquoise thing. Burnt orange, tinge of 
pink purple something in there there we go i am not a professional designer so i'm sorry designers if you hate this color scheme okay so from there let's go ahead and check this box for additive blend and you'll see that they kind of blend together and create this really cool effect there in the middle so now we have got our colors going we want them to slowly fade off so they don't just blip out of existence which is very simple to do see this white line above all the colors if we want to change that, we just click at the end there and that will create another dot for us. And now we can change the opacity here to zero. So now these particles will just slowly fade out as they get a little bit further. So I feel like some of these particles aren't going fast enough. So let's go ahead and up the speed of them. We'll up them a little bit, give them a little bit more power. And I think it would also be kind of cool if the audio animated the speed so that some are shooting out really fast and some are slow. So to do that, once again, let's go ahead and duplicate the scale particle emitter um, behavior there. And we can just rename that to speed. And we'll come down to the apply to object speed. So now if we play through, some of these should be going technically faster than others. And we could even up the scale on that. Maybe set this to 10. Don't want them going too fast. And we could also set the apply mode to add or subtract. So some of them will actually get slowed down if the music's quiet and some of them will go faster. Let's go ahead and add in a background. So we'll go to our library, go to generators and we should be able to find a gradient. Here it is, that's all alphabetically ordered. Just drag that into the layers. And unfortunately it dropped it right in the middle where my playhead was. So we'll just go to the end and push O for out. And let's take this gradient and drop it in underneath everything. Now let's go to the inspector and we can actually change the colors of this gradient. So we're gonna change the dark blue here to maybe a nice dark orange. And now let's go ahead and get the distance between these two to be much greater. So you can see the start and end here. So we'll just drag these up till we get to a spot that we're happy. Stretch it way out and let's go ahead and change this blue a little bit. I'm not really digging the vibe there. There we go. Now we're getting kind of a color that I like. And let's go ahead and maybe off center it so it's kind of got a diagonal there. I think that would look kind of nice. And let's see how this is looking. Perfect. And maybe you're not happy with the colors because they're kind of a little too colorful and whatever so you could totally change that there we go okay so we got those colors shifted around a little bit now let's go ahead and actually make these particles 3d so that they're flying at the camera in 3d space so to do that let's go ahead and add an object and we'll select camera and we will switch to 3d now what's going to be important is everything switched to 3d which is nice except for the fact that the gradient is going to shift around and we don't want that so to fix that, we're just gonna right click on this group and uncheck 3D group. So now that gradient is just gonna be locked to our camera. Now also if we go to our emitter settings, we can change it to 3D. And so now this emitter is actually emitting in 3D space. From there, let's go ahead and select our camera and I want it to be spinning around this the entire time. So go up to behaviors, camera, and we're gonna set this to sweep. And what this is doing is over the length of this move, the camera will slowly be going around, but it's only 30 degrees and this is a long song. So we want it to be circling quite a bit faster. So let's set this to something like 7,000. And now if we play it back, it'll be spinning much faster. And you can see the particles just flying like crazy there. And let's go ahead and get rid of the 3D grid so that we aren't looking at that. Nice, that's adding a lot of really cool dimension to this particle emitter. Now, one other thing I wanna do is to give these particles even more depth, let's zoom way in. So if we select our camera, we can go to our angle of view and let's set this to something like 150. After that, maybe we wanna add in something like some depth of field. So we can go up to our render settings here and go down to depth of field. And then let's go ahead and drag the amount all the way up and we can just set the focus offset until we get the part of the particles that we want in focus, which is usually that center section. And now if we play through, 
perfect. I think we have got something really cool going here. Now, one other thing you might want to do is maybe you want to have these particles look something like your logo or something you know, spirals or something like that that's really creative, you can totally do that and it's quite simple. So I'm gonna actually bring in an image. I'll push Command I. So I'm actually going to bring in this like button here and I'm gonna disable it so we don't see it. And if we jump into our emitter, we can scroll to the bottom here and you can see the particle source. So we can then just drag this like button into that. So now the particle emitter is sending out like buttons, which is really kind of cool. And then we could also set the color of this original like button so that it's actually choosing the other colors because it can't overlay the color onto black. So if we just select our original like button, go to filters, color, and we will set this to colorize. We can change the black, really bright works well, and then it'll just overlay those colors on top. So now we have like this swarm of like buttons to remind people to like the video. And then we could also go into our emitter and we could change the spin randomness so that a lot, some of them are spinning and we could even add a little spin. And so now they'll just be spinning out and it just adds a little bit more visual flair to our audio visualizer. So you could do that like button or you could do something a little more creative like this. Oh yeah, that's, that's nice. I think this is what people really want in their lives. So if you want to do something crazy like this, have at it, my friends. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next Friday. Because now I'm doing a Final Cut Friday thing. So yeah, jump on board. See you then. Peace.